pushing on one syringe. Hello friends, today we're gonna be bleeding the RockShox X-Lock full sprint lockout on my racing machine. In the front, RockShox RS1, the rear damper is the RockShox Monarch XX and this lockout uh, works simu simultaneously on both. And this is how it works. It's open, it's locked out, that's it. If the lockout isn't firm or uh, this, this remote doesn't work really um, as it was, as it should be at the beginning, so it's not really firm, maybe it's, it feels like spongy, then probably there is some air in the system. This is the hose uh, for the front suspension, this is the hose for the rear suspension. If you didn't have the damper, uh, your lockout will, would probably look something like this and be thinner. Step one, bike positioning and stabilizing. You want to have your bike stabilized, so ideally on the bike stand, if not the bike stand, maybe tur turbo trainer. If you don't have these, just, just put it into place which will be safe for the bike. It will not fall down because we're gonna have two syringes here. So we're gonna have, uh, you wanna have stable environment. And the second thing is leveling the bike. Um, remember, always with the bleeding, you wanna have the bleeding ports uh, at the highest point. In my case, comparing to, of course, the fork and the damper. So as you can see, it is, yes, it is in the, at the highest point, point. In case of the dropper post, remember, if you have the external cables, uh, the, uh, the hose will go up there. You wanna make sure uh, the bleeding port will, the port will be uh, higher. I also put something just right here so that my bike is also moved a little bit that way because in that way I, I could see that my housing are now in perfect position for the bubbles to come out this way. In order to do this job we need for sure the Torx T25 and also the smallest one T10. I am always using the gloves. We're working with the oil and so some safety glasses would be perfect but these also can do the job. Oil, what oil to use? First off, uh, on the manual, uh, RockShox say that for this remote lockout, you're gonna use, you have to use the RockShox Reverb Fluid. This is not RockShox Reverb Fluid, just it, it looks like this and has the Reverb sign here. Uh, and they say on the instruction that uh, RockShox Reverb has got 3W viscosity. Uh, but when you read about RockShox Reverb um, oil uh, everywhere, it says it's got 2.5W. So I'm just using the Motorex Racing Fork uh, oil with 2.5W. It work, it's been working for me just very well. Not the, the 5WT. So if you, you use the 3W, it's not gonna be bad for your uh, remote. I'm just using 2.5 because that's what RockShox Reverb Fluid is. And of course you need the bleeding kit. You can use the RockShox Original Bleeding Kit, uh, which will be just more expensive. Alternatives in this case are always good. I'm just using some uh, Polish uh, brands, which has so many different kits. This one is made for RockShox uh, X-Lock. It's cheaper and it works in the same way. Well, I didn't even know I'm getting the oil with this set, uh, but this is the 5WT. They've used it, they've checked it, so you could use it. Uh, I'm gonna use 2.5 anyway. There are also the gloves. Here is my bleeding port number one, and so I want it to be facing upwards. For bleeding the front lockout only, you would use about 10 milliliters of the oil in one syringe. We've got the full sprint, uh, both front and rear suspension lockout, uh, and the manual from RockShox say you're gonna fill one fourth and three fourth uh, of the capacity of these uh, syringes. So it's gonna be just between five and 10 on one, and between 10 and 15 millimeters on the other.
Now we want to get rid of the bubbles here inside. Uh, as you can see, I've taken lots of these just to show you that I'm not going to push this oil out. I'm going to take it first in and then get rid of the, of the bubbles. Let's do it. Now we're going to unthread this T10 little bolt of the bleeding port on the damper. And we threaded the syringe with uh, more of the oil, so three fourths of its capacity. Same thing up here, the lockout is in the fully extended position, so locked out. The principle is very easy. We're gonna push the oil back and forth between these two syringes, uh, looking at some bubbles coming out right there and right there back and forth, back and forth, and then we're going to work a little bit with the lockout remote if there is any bubbles inside. Pushing on one syringe, pulling on the other. I'm not pushing it all the way through, I'm just leaving like three milliliters and now we go back. Additional info guys, uh, this is the bar adjuster. This is nothing else like the compression uh, on your lockout, so how firm the lockout will be. On the manual, RockShox say that for the um, X-Lock full sprint, so both front and rear remote, you got to, you've got to um, just thread it all the way according to the arrow, so it will be in the fully extended position in order to bleed. Some say you need to do the opposite. Uh, so you need to have it in the uh, in the closest posi position to your, re your remote lockout. Uh, on the reverb it will be the opposite. RockShox say you do it um, um, not in the in the direction of the arrow but in the opposite direction uh, but some say <laughs> direction of the arrow would be best. So you just try it out. Uh, I've changed the position on the bar adjuster, now I'm gonna work a little bit uh, on the remote lockout and I'm pretty much sure it will be uh, perfect for me. That's where the RockShox manual ends, meaning uh, when you have the uh, bleeding port on the damper side locked, you do same thing up here. But some people who, who've been doing that many times say uh, just work a little bit on the uh, remote up here first and then remove the syringe and uh, close uh, the, the bleeding port.
I always want to have precisely measured position meaning of my levers because then I will feel it on the races and it will really get me crazy. So the bike is uh, on the ground, on the floor. I'm measuring the distance from the stem to the uh, clamp and then also the height. After the successful bleeding there is no uh, like play on the remote, it's really firm, just listen how it works. And one side note, as you can see the oil is clear and clean, if it wasn't like that I would have to repeat the whole process using a new and new oil. Uh, so that it would get clean, but that means it's everything fine with my suspension, it's just clean. And this is the little bubble, air bubble, I got rid of and it made my remote lockout a little bit spongy, still working, but a little bit spongy, now it's great. Ah. <sighs> Guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Remember to join our forum.sigbiker.com where we discuss all the topics, uh, training, service, any issues with the bikes. If you want to share anything with us, join our Facebook group. All the links are below. And if you want to join my patrons, feel free to do so. And now, okay, you might watch just one or two episodes more, but then let's go and ride. <laughs>